In this video, I'll go over the command line tools that I use on a daily basis. I use macOS, but all these tools are available for both Linux and macOS, so you can follow along. I'm not going to cover stuff that I don't use, but basically the tools that I use every day. The shell that I use is CSH. I think that some of the tools are only available for CSH, but as you will know, there are equivalents for Bash. So if you're using Bash, you may have these tools, you may not, but you always will be able to find an alternative or an option. I have all these tools in my CSHRC file. All of this information is publicly available in my dot files in case you want to grab it. Here is the folder CSHRC, CSHRC file.sh. Here is the repo. If you scroll down a little bit, you will be able to find here the CSHRC folder. I'm going to switch to that folder right now. Here you can see the CSHRC file, so you can open that file. And if you scroll down, you will be able to see what we will go through in the video right now. If you like my dot files, remember to start the repo. You can do that here. Okay, so let's go back to NeoBIM. In this section here, command line tools, you will be able to find everything. So first, in the main tool that I use at all times is Tmux. So what is Tmux? It's the bar that you see here on the top. And what do I use it for? To manage sessions, basically to navigate around my different projects. Let's say that I want to go to my notes. I press hyper TU. That is the key map that I use. Notice the name of this Tmux session is Obsidian Main. This is where I keep all my notes in a private repo. Here is the path for this file. If I want to go back to the previous session, I press hyper F space. If for example, I want to jump to my home directory, press hyper T H. Notice the name of the session here. Notice where I'm at. If I want to jump back to the previous session, I press again hyper F space. So I basically have a key map for each one of the important directories that I navigate to and I can jump to the directories. It doesn't matter which application I'm on. Let's say that I'm on my browser. As you see here, if I press hyper T H, that's going to take me to my home directory. Let me go back to the other session, which is the dot files latest. If I want to see the sessions that I have open, I press hyper F, the letter S brings up this tool. I can see all the different sessions. I get a preview at the bottom as well. I can switch to one of these sessions or I can close the sessions as well. If I want to close this, I'm just going to press the letter X. I get a confirmation. I'm just going to type Y that close that session. I also use Tmux panes sometimes. As you can see here, I have a pane on the right hand side. It's not something that I do all the time. I also create Tmux windows at times. I'm going to press hyper F and the letter C to create a new window. Notice that it created it here on the right hand side. I can switch between windows. If I press hyper F U, hyper F I and switch between window one and two. That's just the way that I configured it. I exit this window and I'm just left with one. So that's what I use Tmux for mainly, but its main use case for me is just session management. If you want to know how I jump between different sessions using key maps, let me know down in the comments and I can create a video for that. I already have a video in which I go over the Primagen's Tmux sessionizer. I explain some of this stuff. The video is a little bit old, but you'll be able to find it in the top right corner in case you want to watch that. Moving on to the next tool I have here, FCF. What is FCF? Let me jump to this repo. Make sure to start it if you like it. And if I scroll down here, you will be able to see that it's a general purpose command line fuzzy finder. Let me show you what this is. I'm going to press this key map that you see here, hyper EN. And this brings up all the hosts that I have configured in my SSH config file. And I can switch to any of these. For example, if I jump, if I want to jump to this host, I just select it. What you see here is the FCF menu. So that's how I was able to achieve this using FCF. Just going to hit enter and you will notice is that it's going to SSH into this host. When I did that, it created a Tmux session. So if I bring my sessions, you can see that here. It's just something that I configured. Let me go back to the previous session, which is where we came from. So that's what I did with this hyper EN. I just brought up the Tmux SSH Anizer Agen script, which is something that I created. I also covered this in the Primagen's Tmux Sessionizer video. But if you want me to create another one for this, let me know. Here is another use case for FCF. If I press hyper TN, I bring the Tmux sessionizer script, which allows me to select one of these directories. If, for example, I want to search for scripts here, want to go to this directory, notice that it took me there, but it created a Tmux session. If the Tmux session does not exist, it will create it, but if it exists, it's just going to switch to it. Let's go back to the file. This is another one, color scheme selector that I created. I uploaded this video yesterday. Let me show you what this does. I'm going to switch to my home directory. I'm going to press hyper C N. This is going to bring up an FCF menu. I'm going to select a different color scheme. This dark puccine Just going to hit enter here. Notice that my color scheme changed everywhere. Changed in Tmux, changed in Kitty. It changed at the top on sketchy bar. And it also changed in my Starship prompt. If I clear this, you will see that Starship has the new colors. This also changed the colors in NeoVim. If I quit this and I reopen it, you will be able to see that NeoVim has this new color scheme applied. Let me go back and switch to my current color scheme. Just going to press hyper C N again. Going to select it. This is the one. This is a custom color scheme that I created. Going to clear this part. Now I'm back to my original color scheme. 
and I go back here, just going to quit NeoVim and reopen it. If you want to learn how I did all this, the color scheme selector video is going to show up on the top right corner and I explain everything in detail there. What else do I use FCF for? For command history and for search for files. If I'm here in my home directory, I press Control R, that is going to bring up my command history. I can search commands or I can select one of the commands. So if, for example, I need to restart Yabai, I just type Yabai and it shows the commands. I can select one of these here. Search for files with Control T. I don't do this regularly, but it's an option. Um, if you want to search for stuff, there are some other options here as well. SSH, I don't do this. If you want to kill a process, you can do that as well. Or if you want to Telnet, mm, no one uses Telnet these days, but it's just an idea. If you want to see how I configured FCF, there's a few caveats that you need to be aware of and a few tips that I'm going to leave you here. If it exists, I source it. If you want to preview the file contents using bat, I'm going to show you what bat is in a minute and how I use it. You just add these commands here. If you want to change the default, which is two asterisk to two colons, for example, when you run one of these commands. This is where I did that. And if you want to change the color scheme when FCF opens, you just do it here. I got this from this repo, which is the Eldritch repo. You can grab this as well. Okay, so that's my main use case for FCF. Moving on to the next tool, Starship. I'm not sure if this is a CLI tool, but it makes my prompt more useful. If I switch to my home directory, and let's say that I want to switch to my .files latest directory. This prompt shows me directory that I'm on. I have changes in Git. Notice these symbols here. I'm just going to run Git status and it does tell me that I have changes. That's why the icon shows this way. Let me push these changes to GitHub right now. I'm going to switch back to NeoVim and I press leader GG. I use lazy Git. I have a few changes here that I applied for the video. I'm just going to press space to stage these changes and I'm going to press C to commit. Here is my summary. I'm just going to hit enter and I'm going to press capital P. That is going to push the changes. Just going to quit out of here with Q and I switch back to my home directory. I'm going to hit enter here. Notice that the symbol is gone. If I run git status again, sorry, git status, nothing to commit. Also, if you're working with multiple Kubernetes clusters, you can have the name of the cluster here, the name of the namespace, but you can find the details in my dot files as well. Let me switch back to NeoVim here. This is the way that I configured Starship, specify this parameter, Starship config, and I point to the file where the Starship config is located. Let me bring up this file, Starship active config. This is the one and I hit enter here. And here's where you configure the different sections for your prompt. Notice that, yeah, I have the cluster here and the namespace for the Kubernetes section for example. If you want me to create a video regarding Starship, how I set it up and everything, let me know down in the comments and I can do that as well. So let's go back to the other file. Moving on to the next section, brew auto completion settings. Mm, this shouldn't be in this section. I'm just going to get rid of this. I'm going to bring it up here because this is not a command line tool. It's just some auto complete settings for brew, which is the package manager that I use on Mac OS. So let's go back here. And the next item on the list is ECA, ESA, not sure how it's pronounced. Let me type this here, which is basically an LS replacement. I was using EXA, but it's unmaintained. So now I switch to ESA. You can find the repo here. And as you can read here, it uses colors to distinguish file types and metadata. It knows about symlinks, extended attributes, and Git. I have a few aliases configured here. If ESA is installed, for example, if I run LS, it's actually running ESA in the background. If I run LL, running ESA with this arguments, LLA to show hidden files as well. And instead of running tree, I'm using ESA with this tree argument. Let's switch back so that I can show you how this looks like. I'm just going to hit here LL. Notice the colors here are different depending on the type of file or if it's a directory. Notice that in my case for my custom theme, directories show purple. This is just a file. Let's see if we have, um, this is a markdown file, shows a different color. Let me see if I can show you some symlinks. I don't have any symlinks here. I know if I switch to the config directory and here I have a lot of different symlinks. I'm just going to maximize this pane in Tmux by pressing hyper F capital M. Notice that symlinks have an L here. They show in a different color as well. If I run tree, just going to run tree level two. Notice that the tree command shows with colors as well, but that is because of the alias that I configured that is shown here. Moving on to the next tool, that would be bat, which is cat with wings. Here is the repo as well. And as you can read here, it supports syntax highlighting for a large number of programming and markup languages. I don't regularly cat files nowadays because I'm always in NeoVim, but if I need to cat a file, it's nice to have syntax highlighting so you can see colors and you can differentiate the files better. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to switch to my home directory here. Let me try to cat a file and I do cat. I'm going to bring up FCF, I'm going to look for a file here that I can cat something in my Obsidian repo, maybe this test markdown and I'm just going to type enter here. This is going to cat the file. I'm going to scroll up here with Tmux navigation and you can see that the colors on the file look 
quite nice. So this is syntax highlighting. If instead you just use the regular cat command, this would look really plain and boring and difficult to read. Let me try to cat a different type of file. I'm going to cat and I'm going to press control T, bring FCF. I'm going to search for something in my NeoBean directory that ends in that Lua. So basically a Lua file, lazy.lua. Let me bring this up. I'm just going to hit enter here and notice that it also has syntax highlighting. I'm going to scroll up so you can see the file a little bit more and uh, colors show nice. It's easier to read. Okay, so let's go back to the file. What did I configure here? I have two options. Style plane removes line numbers and got modifications. I think this is git if I'm not mistaken. This means git modifications. Paging never doesn't pipe it through less because by default I remember it pipes it through less. So this is the way that I like using it. But these options shown here, if I run it with two T's, I don't even remember what this does. Let's see. I'm just going to run it on the exact same file. But now I have two T's here. Okay. It's the default. So as you can tell, it pipes it through less. I can scroll up and down and I have the line numbers here on the left hand side. So this is the default behavior basically. Just going to press Q here and it quits. Let's go back here. What happens if I do cat A? I don't remember why I set this up. Like I said, I don't cat files regularly. So let's give it a try. I'm going to bring up the same command. But now instead of this, just going to put A here. See what happens. It shows all the symbols, it seems. Let me scroll up here. Yeah, it seems that that's what it does. Shows you line numbers and it also shows you all the symbols here that are on the file. Moving on to the next option. This is VI mode plugin for CSH. I do use this quite often, we could say. Here's the link to the repo. And you basically have the Vim navigation modes when you're typing commands in your terminal. Insert and normal mode. Let me grab this command here. I'm just going to grab the whole thing. Let's go back to the home directory. Let's go to the bottom of this file. And I'm just going to type this in here. How do I navigate? If I want to go to command mode, I just press KJ because that's the way that I like doing it. I can go up with K, move to the right with L, move to the left with H. How do I go to normal mode? By pressing KJ. I can figure that here. Vim VI, VI escape bind key that is kj insert escape visual and uh, this other open the escape bind key are set to the same kj something additional that i configured if i want to go to the beginning of a line i'm used to pressing gh or if i want to go to the end of a line i'm also used to press gl so if i go back here i press gl it's gonna take me to the end of the line gh takes me to the beginning of the line you can still use all the default regular vim motions that you're used to and if you want to edit something you're just going to insert mode edit it go back to normal mode it's basically like if you're editing a BIM file. This is something that you will have to configure if you use FCF because otherwise the control R key with FCF is not going to work if you're using this BI mode plugin for CSH. Moving on to the next tool. This is CSH auto suggestions. If it's installed, I source it. Nothing too fancy here. Let me show you what this is. If I'm here, I'm just going to delete this. If I press DD, just as in a regular Vim buffer, deletes that. And let's say that I start typing a command. CD dot. Notice that it has a suggestion there. If I press the right arrow, which in my case, I do with command L. Command H is the left arrow. Command K is up, I think. And command J is down. Basically Vim motions. So it allows me to auto complete command. So I'm just going to type enter here, navigates there. If I start typing another command that I use all the time, if I type yeah, bye, and I see this. If I press the right arrow, I can auto complete it and hit enter to run this command. That's basically what this tool does. You will be able to find the link to the repo here. Moving on to the next tool, C Oxide. It's just a smarter CD command. Notice here that it remembers which directories you use the most. So you can jump to those directories with just a few keystrokes. I don't use this too much because I don't CD into directories at all. Basically, I jump around directories the way that I showed you using Tmux key maps. So if I want to go to a directory, I press hyper T U or hyper TJ. That's how I navigate. But in the case that I need to navigate to a directory for which I don't have a session created, I do this. For example, let's go to Obsidian. If I just type Obsidian, it's going to take me there because it keeps the directories in a database. If I just type here cd.lat or that file's latest, notice that it knows what I was trying to jump into and it did it automatically. Let's try what happens if I just type scripts. There is no match found because I never navigate to this directory. But if I come here at directory below, go to uh, scripts. Let's go to this scripts directory. Now I'm going to switch back to the directory that I was on. Now let's try to go to scripts went somewhere else. Let's try it again. And now it took me to this script directory. The more you use a directory, the higher it will rank in the database. So whenever you type that command, it's going to take you to that specific directory. This is the way that I configured it. Uh, instead of pressing the letter Z, I just switched it to CD and I created another alias for replacing CD dash. So CD dash is just to go to the previous directory or to the alternate directory. So if I press CDD, let's see how that works here. Notice that I'm in the scripts directory, but before I was in this, that file's later 
related scripts. If I want to go back to this previous directory, I'm just going to press CDD. Takes me there. Now I'm just going to press CDD again. It takes me to scripts. I'm going to press it again. And I'm just alternating, as you can see, between these last two directories. The way that you usually do this is with CD dash, CD dash. But it's just an alias that I created. OK, so that's it for the CLI tools that I use. My top favorite tool is Tmux. That's why it's shown here at the very top of the file. FCF is second for sure. After that, Starship LS replacement. I do use this as well because it looks nicer. Mm, I don't use this often, but it's a good option to have. I do use this one, which allows me to navigate with BIM motions in my terminal commands. I do use that. CSH auto suggestions. That one is useful as well. I do use it quite often. C oxide. I don't use it often because that's not the way that I navigate, but it's good to have it there. If there are tools that I didn't cover, but that you use all of the time, please leave them down in the comments. I would like to try them out. If you can leave a description of what the tool does would be quite useful so that others can get new recommendations and so that I can also learn new tips and tricks. Oh, and really important. Don't forget to use